Okay, let's talk about the AccuPlacer Next Generation QAS. And the QAS stands for Quantitative Reasoning, Algebra, and Statistics. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are a soon-to-be college student or college student right now, and your university or college said, hey, you're going to be taking an AccuPlacer to determine your math placement. So that's the whole idea behind the AccuPlacer exams. Uh, there are other placement exams out there, but the AccuPlacer is very popular. So uh, what we're going to do here is take a look at a practice problem uh, that you'll definitely want to know because this is going to be a core algebra skill. Um, so we're going to go ahead and see if you can handle this particular practice problem. Of course, if you can handle it and all you know, and you're strong in various skills, all you're going to do is just increase the odds of you doing well on AccuPlacer, which is important because that means you're going to be able to have more options and maybe you know be able to place into the highest level math course, um, you know, based upon your potential and math background. But before we get to that, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several, several years, I constructed many online math courses to uh, include an AccuPlacer Next Generation QAS Math Prep course. Uh, very, very comprehensive. I've had a lot of people take this course with success. I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video. It's something you can check out later. But let's go ahead and focus in on the algebra component of the QAS, the AccuPlacer QAS. So uh, one area of algebra that you really, really uh, want to understand well is the slope, okay? So uh, this is a huge uh, topic, okay? You need to be able to understand the slope of a line, what it means, what it represents, positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, Lines that are vertical have undefined slope. So I'm kind of going off on <laughs> different areas here because it's a big topic and it's a subset of what you're going to be uh, tested on on the QAS. Now, if you're fully prepared for the uh, AccuPlacer QAS, this problem here should be pretty easy. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I have two points, okay? And what I'd like you to do is to find the slope, okay, of the line that passes through these two points, okay? So I want you to find M, all right? So hopefully, all of you out there uh, remember how to do this problem. Now, if you don't, okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint here in a second. Then obviously I'm going to do the problem, but, you know, the whole idea behind a video like this is simply to, you know, um, use it as feedback on what your current skill set is. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, a hint. Now, if you want to do the problem without hearing a hint, I would suggest try to do that. Pause the video and go ahead and do it. But for those of you that need a little bit of a hint, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you now. So the slope uh, of a uh, slope of a line, okay, is defined by the rise over the run. Okay, so what that means is the rise is going to be the change, okay, in the y's uh, over the change in the x's. Now, there's a more formal definition here. Uh, matter of fact, let me go ahead and give it to you as an additional hint. So, the slope you can define as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus uh, x1, okay? So, those are your formulas, and that's a basic definition. So if this kind of, you know, refreshed your memory, go ahead and pause the video and solve the problem. Okay, so let me go ahead and take care of this. And this is really a basic skill set that you need to understand within algebra, okay? And so if you're struggling with this, then, you know, that's, you know, uh, you know, you got to, you know, really start more aggressively studying for the AccuPlace or QAS. But let's go ahead and apply this. So the slope, M, okay, is good, the acronym that we'd like to use for the slope is going to be the changes in the y's, okay, right here. So we're basically what that means is we're going to subtract the y's from one another. So here are the y's, okay, so let's just highlight the x's while we're at them. So here are the x's, right? So because at a point, all right, it's going to be an x, y point. That's how we learn in, um, how you learn in algebra what a point represents a coordinate, but we like to we're going to kind of more technically refer to a point as an ordered 
pair because it's a pair of values, but it has a particular order. So it's going to be your X coordinate first and then your Y coordinate first. Okay. And of course, these are represent points on the X, Y plane. All right. Now here is, uh, now if you're with me so far, now I'm going to kind of highlight where most students make mistakes when, uh, uh, we're talking about the slope. So I'm going to give you the kind of common mistakes. Now, the first common mistake is they'll subtract the X's. They'll put the X's, the differences of the X's in the numerator and the differences of the Y's. So in other words, we'll, they'll forget the formula and they'll flip-flop this. Okay, so, so don't do that. <laughs> so the next mistake is what I'm going to really kind of stress here. Okay, so let's focus in on our Y's. So this is a Y and this is a Y. So let's go ahead and take two, this Y right here, and we'll subtract it. We'll subtract one away from that two, okay? So that's kind of representing this part of the formula, all right? Now, at this point, we have to now find the differences of the X's. So here's an X right here, and here is an X right there. So let's say, oh, okay, I'll take this X, negative three, and I'll subtract it away from this X here, four, okay? So you're saying, okay, that's allowed because we're taking this x and, and this x and we're finding the difference. But this is incorrect, incorrect. This is probably one of the most common mistakes I see with slope calculation. Okay, so let's go back over here and fix this. All right, now up here in the numerator, I started with this 2. Okay, I took this y right here, uh, came from this point. Okay, in other words, I used this point's information to take that y value and I subtract it away from this one. Okay, this y this y value there. But basically the idea is this. You used this point's information first. Okay, I used the two, okay, up here in this fraction first. So being that you use this two first, you gotta use this four right down here in the denominator first. Okay, so when I'm subtracting, they gotta you basically Whatever you choose, you can choose this point's information, it's fine, but whatever you choose to start with, like say 2 minus 1, I got to use this 4 down in the denominator. So it's going to be 4 minus a minus 3, okay? So, you know, it's not going to be negative 3 minus 4 because you would reverse the order. So this is one of the most, uh, probably the com one of the most common mistakes that I've seen students make up beyond uh, flip-flopping the X and the Y's, okay? So do not do that because this, uh, again, um, very, very, very common mistake. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, let me go and erase this, and show you another er uh, area where students make a mistake, and it's the following, okay? So let's go ahead and um, do this calculation. Matter of fact, you should go ahead and pause the video and, and do this, see if you can go ahead and just do this arithmetic. All right, so two minus one right up here, is going to be what? That's obviously going to just be a positive one. Now down here is the point where uh, the area where students, you know, often make uh, more mistakes. So we have a negative of a negative. So four minus a minus three is what? Well, that means four plus three. Okay. So this is going to be one over seven. So the slope is going to be one seventh. All right. So the slope of a line that passes through these two points on the xy plane is 1 over 7. So if you got this correct and you understood exactly why, you know, you got it correct, uh, and you were able to do this without, you know, any hints, then that's pretty good, okay? Uh, uh, now, of course, that's just one, one, one uh, subskill that, you know, you're going to have to be really fully ready for, you know, uh, on the Accuplace or QAS or, you know, algebra. There's a lot of algebra and we haven't even talked about statistics. OK. And then quantitative reasoning is really you know, just your ability to take data, you know, facts and kind of interpret it in, in the real world. But, in, you know, before you're good, you can be good at quantitative reasoning. You just you, you have to be strong with just basic math. Uh, concepts and skills, okay, of which, you know, obviously in this video, we just focused on one being the slope. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. So um, again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to my AccuPlacer QAS uh, math prep course in the description of this video. 
very, very, very comprehensive. Um, so if you're struggling, you know, preparing for math, you kind of need more of kind of an organized plan. So something like my course could really help you uh, get going. Now, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you prepare for the AccuPlace or QAS. You could check that out and hopefully consider subscribing as I'm posting the new math uh, videos all the time. If you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave us some feedback. Um, is this the first time you're taking AccuPlacer? Are you transferring colleges? Uh, uh, have you taken other math placement exams? Uh, maybe like the Alex or another AccuPlacer. Uh, so any feedback is good feedback. But um, I always like to uh, basically stress to all you out there is a couple things. One, if you feel like you're good in math, you're like, oh, I, I'm going to do fine because I was really, really good in math. I got good grades in math in high school, et cetera. That's, you can't rest on, on that in terms of like not having to study, okay? Because um, a lot of people get overconfident because they reflect back and they, they go, they have good memories of their math classes and stuff. They're like, oh, yeah, no, I, I studied all this stuff and I did really, really well. And that could be true. I'm not saying that isn't true, but the, uh, the problem there is that sometimes people get so overconfident that they don't study. You have to study, even if you did great in math, because there's just too many uh, little things and skills that you're going to have to kind of bring out in your memory. Okay. So you have to study. Now that's kind of the, for the person that's, you know, really confident in math. Let me talk about the person that has um, a lot of math phobia or math anxiety, or who maybe potentially been out of school for a long, long time. You can also hurt yourself by being too underconfident. In other words, like putting, uh, basically putting on a false, having this false perception that you can't improve in math, that you're terrible in math, that there's just, you know, you're going to fail, you're going to struggle. And you see, you have to be careful with your mindset, okay? Um, when you're preparing for exams like this, I could just tell you from experience that you can do a lot better in math than you think you can if you struggled before. What you got to do, though, is kind of take a deep breath and have a good study plan and find a teacher that you can uh, learn from. So hopefully, you know, that, you know, you like my instruction and you find it clear. So you would want to get into a course like mine and really start building your skill sets, skill sets up, math skill sets up over time. OK, but you can dramatically improve and do well on these exams. But if you're too kind of obsessed with not doing well or if you're too afraid of the exam or too fearful or just hate math, then that's just, you know, you're going to have a huge mental block there. But uh, with that being said, um, I definitely wish you all the best on AccuPlace or QAS or any other math uh, placement course that you might find yourself in. Because, you know, if you're going to prepare for one, you're, you'll just by default be preparing for others as well. But with that being said, thank you for your time and have a great day.